Are you living the 80s healthy lifestyle? Grab a V8. Chock full of sodium. Ooh, V8. More sugar than a Coca-Cola. Yes, Daddy, more. Makes a terrible lubricant. Ooh, rough around the edges. Want just a carrot inside you? Nuh-uh. He's bringing seven of his closest friends. Ooh, it's a party in here and everyone's coming. V8. The V stands for vagitosis. You know when I pick up a movie, that's when I'm on to pressure now. The question always comes back to me, what will they think? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to What Were They Thinking, a podcast about bad to questionable... Wait a second, why are we talking... We're talking about Ninja 3, The Domination. We're supposed to be talking about bad to questionable movies. This movie is perfect. I have no notes whatsoever. But maybe my co-host has something to say about it. Uh, I, of course, am the first co-host, Nathan, and with me, as always is the uh, John LaMotta to my Lucinda Dickey. <laughs> I don't know. It's the only two people that I know in this movie, except for uh, Shokushugi and James Hong. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't go like Shokushugi to my Black Ninja or something like that. Uh, yeah. yeah, this is, uh, hey, hey, everyone. It's it's me. It's Brendan. It's the other co-host. Uh, Nathan, I gotta say, I get a kick out of whenever you... Uh, <laughs> Whenever you start an episode like that, because nine times out of ten, you're the one who picked the movie. <laughs> yeah, and you're I like, I don't know how are we talking about this movie. How, how did, about, come how to did this? this get here? What? <laughs> what? I don't get it. It's, it's because all the fools who laugh at it are wrong, and I'm here to prove them wrong. I mean, I think we're talking about a movie with some strong cult appeal here. Oh yes, yes, yes. Um, in fact, I have so many fond memories of seeing this as a child. Uh, the, the Golan Globus canon films, Ninja 3, The Domination. You know, one of those... There's a, there's a thing about the canon movies back in the day is, like, all... Like, most VHS movies, they, they, the tapes, they came in, like, just the regular, kind of uniform-sized boxes, but the canon movies all seem to come in these, like sized boxes that you would usually associate with pornography <laughs> yeah i mean some of them get pretty close to that i mean there's this one i if there were boobies in it maybe yeah because i mean there's some oof, there's some weird sex choices going on in this flick i i like it okay just <laughs> i'm gonna take it back for a quick second there's some weird choices in this movie in general I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> this movie is wall to wall, top to bottom, nuts. This movie is crazy. This is like the pinnacle of like when someone says, uh, I'm looking for a canon movie, like a canon films movie that's like just about as crazy as they got. Which one do you do you recommend? Th this is the one I would say. This is, I would you put Ninja Three: The Domination. You put this one on a on a double bill with. Electric Boogaloo, which yeah. also stars Lucinda Dickey. Yeah, man. <laughs> Welcome yeah. back to the show. <laughs> right. But, but uh, you know, before we start talking about the, uh, I just the more insane parts of this movie, I'll give the, the quick rundown of the plot. So the plot is as such. Um, if you've seen The Exorcist, it's that, but with ninjas. Mm -hmm. Hilarity ensues. <laughs> wow very succinct and to the point i like it okay all right all right it's got all right, some john right. hughes in there <laughs> <laughs> there's a, okay there's a you know, uh, this this uh ninja for hire i'm uh, assassin i'm assuming uh or 
well, he is an assassin on it for hire, I guess. We never, they never get into that. No, I have several questions about that the whole thing, but go ahead. And uh, he's he's killed while doing a, a, an assassination job, which tells you right away he's a terrible ninja. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, he is killed and uh, manages uh, to possess a a department of water and power worker or maybe she just works for con ed i'm not sure yeah she we see uh, her on a power line a telephone pole and a, the sewer so i'm not 100 percent right sure. so I'm, I'm i'm guessing she's dwp because i mean that's that's department of water and power uh by uh, by day but she also moonlights as an aerobics instructor <laughs> played by lucinda dickey who is wooed by one of the police officers Ugh. who killed the ninja who for some reason feels like he needs to wear a sweater under all of his clothes. Oh, God. Uh they she gets possessed by this evil ninja, and the only person who can save them, of course, is Shokashugi. And there's no Kashugi like Shokashugi, like no Kashugi I know, uh, to for when you need to be saved by an evil uh demon ninja possessing you. Right. And hilarity ensues. <laughs> I mean it sure does. I like if you've seen The Exorcist, it's that with ninjas. I mean, I feel that I got it right with the first one, but a little more detail in that that second one. I, so let's. I mean, I got it from that. I mean, the, the, granted, I've seen this a couple times, so maybe that helps. But <laughs> I gotta say, you know, let's let's dive into this. But you know what? I almost feel like we should just uh, we should just call it quits <laughs> on on what were they thinking? Just we're done talking about any other movie. And we just talk about this for like 250 episodes because I think we could probably do that. Well, I was going to say, I don't, it, th- few movies get crazier than this movie. This is like, <laughs> this is the pinnacle. It's like when we, when we talked about fateful findings uh, on a different, on a different level, um, I was of a similar opinion where I was like, you know what? I think we just hang it up here because I don't think you can get any crazier than this movie. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, And we, ha- we have friend of the podcast, Sam Furstenberg to thank for this. Cause he, directed this as well as you know american ninja and um the last ninja movie we did yeah what the hell was that uh, called revenge of the ninja. thank you revenge of the ninja oh and folks i just want to let the folks at home know don't worry if you haven't seen the first or the second one because they have absolutely nothing to do with each other the only thing that those <laughs> movies have to connect each other is the fact that shokushugi is in all of them as different characters as d- <laughs> yes <laughs> He's a bad guy in one. He's the main character hero in the other. And he is a supporting secondary character in this movie. Although he did a little Hogan brother, brother politic and uh, to get his way at the end of it. Yeah. There's a, th- this, this movie, the one thing about this movie that kind of is kind of icky is it's got a little, it's got, it's got a little streak of misogyny just under the surface there. <laughs> Chicks can't kill ninjas. And essentially is what Nathan's talking about. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, okay, first question right off the bat. I have to ask. Uh, that Yes, that ninja does actually belong <laughs> to that country club. So that's how he was able to get onto the golf course without any without being hassled. Well, I mean. The only reason why the security guys came to bother him was because he was bothering another patron. <laughs> well, you just don't do that at a country club. No, um, no, especially not in L.A. with a with a very important scientist. <laughs> yep. <laughs> but I gotta okay right away. I gotta ask. Um, okay, so this do movie... all ninjas have cave <laughs> stashes filled with weapons? Yes, all ninjas have cave stashes filled with weapons. Listen, you could fill in this with any question, and they would all be valid. But I actually have a question in mind here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Every movie, I feel like every ninja movie we've ta- we've talked about has like a slightly different view of like what a ninja is, and I think mm-hmm. this one, as far as I can tell, is that ninjas all have like some sort of superpowers, right? Because this ninja in the opening scene, this black ninja, who I actually thought where's green, where's green, the black ninja wearing green, who I actually thought was Shokushugi at first, because like I I forgot that he comes in later, and I just thought this was him, and then you see him a little bit later, but no, but this ninja who com- <laughs> this ninja who comes in at the beginning, um, he seems to he seems to be shot approximately 78 times before he dies. And he only <laughs> dies like 20 minutes at least after all the shooting has happened. Yeah. Well, and that's because, despite the fact that he actually legitimately dies, although his spirit doesn't, 
only a ninja could kill a ninja. But he but he does die though. <laughs> but his spirit doesn't. It enters into the body of Lucinda Dickey. Oh boy. <laughs> so and and okay, and ninjas in general, they're for higher assassins, right? You 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 I yeah, I guess. You say, hey, here's they're this like spies and whatnot. Yeah, here's this one Maybe two, maybe three targets. This ninja, when this movie starts with this ninja just murdering everyone in sight. It's it's supposed to be one target, I'm guessing. This okay. very important scientist who we'd never learn his name, what he is a scientist of, who he works for. Therefore, we don't find out who hired this black ninja. None of it, all of this, this entire murder spree at the, I, I don't know, the Los Angeles Public Country Club just this murder spree is just set dressing. Oh yeah, it's garnish. It's the parsley of this movie. And and it's also like it's also like I feel like when this movie started with him just uh, brutalizing all these all these country club people, it's like am I watching like a Friday the Thirteenth movie? Because this feels like a slasher movie more than anything else right off the bat. Right, and it it definitely does have a very horror bent to it. But uh, like I said earlier, this guy is a, a terrible ninja. Well, he doesn't hide idea, very well. No, he doesn't. And the whole idea of like the the ninja, the the stealthy, silent assassin is like the in and out, gone before you even realize he was there. <laughs> this guy here, broad daylight, yeah. assaults a, 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 a one of the guys, I guess, bodyguards. Then lifts the golf cart, kills the guy's girlfriend. Uh, he throws, he blows a blow dart with the accuracy oh. of bullseye from Daredevil <laughs> into the into the revolver that the guy has. It blows up in his hand. He kills the scientist. By this time, the cops have been alerted, and they're storming the <laughs> storming the country club. Helicopters, bike cops, patrol cars. No, to worry though, this ninja can apparently outrun police cruisers and hide in swamps using a reed to breathe like a scuba tube it, or, or, or a snorkel tube. And it's almost as if these people, these cops, these helicopters, everything gather so quickly. It's like they were waiting just around the corner just in case a ninja broke into the country club and started murdering well, people because they get there. Just gonna, very I don't think it had to do anything to do with ninjas. It is a country club in LA. Probably chock full of white folk. <laughs> Police were probably just in case we don't want anything happening to these very important scientists. Well, then, and, and other numerous amounts of white folk playing golf <laughs> at I think six or seven in the morning. <sighs> I, I, I'm going to add then as well that all of the police in this movie are really bad at their jobs. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, very, very much including so, including our um, Robin Williams esque body haired uh, police Ooh, officer Lord. who we meet later. He, he's like a, like a. A high pile shag carpet under that fucking shirt of his. What's his name? Billy Secord, I think his name. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He comes across. He comes across as such a sleaze bag at the beginning. So much so that I thought the movie was trying to tell us. When I first saw this, I thought the movie was trying to tell us, no, 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 this is a sleaze bag. He's gonna be like, he's gonna be taken care of. He's gonna get his just desserts. But no, he's positioned as the love interest. Yeah. Because he approaches. Her he, Lucinda Dickey, uh, you know, it's a, it's a tale as old as time. She gets uh, the black ninja is dying, and he gives her his soul, and she transfers his soul into her. And you know, you know how it goes, because uh, they both hold the same sword together, <laughs> right? They that that sounds a lot more sexual than it is, but right. um, with the with the with the rubber hilt guard. <laughs> but when she's in the police station, and he he approaches her, and then immediately starts hitting on her, and I'm like, and I'm like, dude, she just witnessed like. A ninja doing some like otherworldly shit. Even if she didn't, even if she doesn't remember all that, she just saw a dead a dead guy, like or a dying yeah. guy, do something. And he gave weird. her a sword that she just kept. Yeah, no, it's evidence. So I'll just keep it in my van. I'll just keep it. I mean, it was a gift. You don't turn. You don't return a gift. The the best part about this whole opening salvo is, like you said, the 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 black ninja who wears green gets shot conservatively 150 times At least. before he dies. Yeah. Um, they, they wreck a police cruiser. They wreck, they wreck a police bike, like a motorcycle. They have a police helicopter, but it conveniently flies behind 
a mountain before it blows up. Oh, I love that. Despite the fact that, you know, it's a, it's a, one of the more successful canon films. Um, and they were, I think these guys, they were at this point, they were kind of at the heading towards the peak of their success. Yeah. Uh, they still were not spending destroy a helicopter money. Oh yeah. No, this whole movie cost $2 million. They weren't spending. And, money and, and I'll tell you one place they did not spend, uh, the money at, uh, was the hairdressing because when we we do get to see the face of the black ninja who wears green oh. and he looks like a Japanese Mo Howard. <laughs> I, the best toupee of all time. <laughs> Terrible. But yeah, so Billy C- yeah. Billy Seacourt just aggressively like hitting on her immediately, like, you know, and, and and I love and I love that but I love that we get like a sense of who Lucinda Dickey's character is. And I think her name is Christy. Um and cause, cause immediately, you know, he offers her a soda and she's a very, he has a very defiant, I don't use soft drinks as if you would watch like a, a, like it's drugs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> as if you're watching like a dare commercial, like <laughs> it's like, Hey, you want some Pepsi after school? No, thanks. I don't use Pepsi. Okay. What you want? What you got? What you got? I got what you need. I got what you need. I got, I got Dr. Pepper. I got Mountain Dew. I got Sprite. <laughs> I got Jolt Cola. Jolt Cola. Yeah, it's just, it's just treated like as if it's like a, a like a, the worst drug ever. Or he's offering her like a ci- even like a cigarette. She she's like, treats it mm-hmm. that way, anyways. Yeah, because she's supposed to be like the epitome of that health club uh, fascination that was legitimately a thing. Oh yeah, in the eighties, uh, they made a great right. movie about it called Perfect. Oh, I thought you were going to say uh, a flash dance or... <laughs> no, nope, I'm talking about a really bad movie called <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Not Travolta and Jamie Lee Curtis. Uh, yeah, it's the, it, was one of, it was one of the movies that uh, killed his career. He's, his career's been killed a few times. <laughs> his, 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 his career as a cat. It has nine lives. Mm-hmm. I think that was the first... I think it was probably the first career killer. That was like mid-80s. I don't know... Uh... Staying alive is pretty bad. I think it was just after that, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so so what I'm saying is uh, he's very hairy and he's a creep. <laughs> and she really likes health stuff. Yes. And not only like he's a creep, he's also a stalker creep because oh my God. she kind of lets slip that he she's an aerobics instructor as well mm-hmm. as a DWP worker. And he goes to... A gym that apparently they decided, let's have a real thick carpet on the floor of our gym. Oh. You know, to soak up all the sweat and all that humidity. Oh, in. yeah, love it. This this whole scene is why Curves, the, the gym for ladies, exists. Oh, you mean because of what happens at the end of this scene? What happens at the be- beginning of it, what happens yeah. in the middle of it, and what happens at the end of it, because... She's leading an aerobics uh, class, and you think, okay, well, she's just teaching an aerobics class. They're often off in, like, a separate room, so they have space, and they can play loud music nope. and stuff like that. Nope. Right there in front of a bunch of, like, gross juice pigs, uh, <laughs> just pumping iron, staring at these women, going, uh, yeah, uh, Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I wrote down, it's just like, it's like they're sharing the room with, like, the sweaty meat hog section of the of the gym. and Yeah. And... And immediately, and also it's it's funny because I I just mentioned the movie Perfect, but this scene immediately made me think of it because there's a scene in Perfect where John Travolta is, I mean, sort of 80s stalking Jamie Lee Curtis and that it's supposed to be uh, charming, but really it's not. Right. And then he goes to mm-hmm. the aerobics class and starts like working out. And that's kind of what um what Billy, what Secor does here. He he's he's the one guy in the in the I'm assuming women's aerobic class because I don't see any other men. It was uh, it was like that scene in Armed and Dangerous, but way less funny. <laughs> don't re- I don't even remember what scene that is. What? Oh, you remember they snuck it? They, they snuck into the gym to go talk to Zeus, and they had to hide in a ladies' fitness uh, class. Okay, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And like they got like butts stuck in their face and stuff like that. <laughs> Good times. See, that was because they were hiding, not because they were skeevy creeps who wear you know fucking. Cable knit sweaters underneath their undershirts. <laughs> Very hairy man. But this is the thing. Um, 
so following that scene, there's like a there's like an altercation. The the sweat hogs go not not from uh, not from Welcome Back, Cotter, but the the <laughs> sweaty meat hogs go and like harass one of the girls, and like you know it's looking like it's going to be an assault, possible rape situation. It, oh, it's not a po- it is an assault situation. It's a possible rape. Situation. Yeah, it's it's leading that way. But but when Lucinda because they are manhandling this poor girl. Yeah, and when Christy steps in, there is a huge crowd that just stands there and watches her take on four people. And I know she handles oh. herself, but the cop is in the crowd watching the whole and then, thing, and then proceeds to take her away at the end of it all, and takes her to task and says, "You could go to jail for assault." I'm like. Buddy, did you not watch anything that just happened? Were, were you not were you not there when they legitimately said that they were going to rape her instead of the other girl? Yeah. Because one of the guys is like, oh, we'll have some fun with you. Maybe you'll be our dessert. It's like, dude, where did you get the in the middle of broad daylight? Look, I know it's the 80s, but still. <laughs> He's off the clock. He's off the clock. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. And then and then once once they have that scene where she like you know handles herself and everything, and he says like you know you'll go to jail for assault, and then he starts freaking out because he thinks she doesn't date policemen or something, and I'm like, oh, she says she doesn't date cops. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right. And then right. he flips out because he's like, oh, you don't like me because I'm a cop. Well, I like being a cop. And you know what? I she I think she should have stuck to her guys. I think I think he's. <laughs> One of the worst love interests in a movie I've seen in a while. And then, yeah, when he has this little freak out, and then the movie, of course, has her go like, oh, now I'm turned on. <laughs> but it doesn't... Like, no. And I even noted, that escalated fast. Yeah. Because she goes from, let me out of the car, I hate you, I don't take cups, to come back to my place, I'll pour V8 juice on myself, oh. and we can, you can doink me. She pour- Don't worry, I'll let you keep your sweater on. Oh. She pours V8 juice. Her Their sex scene involves her pouring V8 juice down her uh, chest and him licking it up. <laughs> um, uh, with apologies to our guest, apparently, our former guest, apparently it was Mr. Furstenberg's idea for that detail. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Sammy. Not, not <laughs> since Hollywood. <sighs> Can you imagine, though, how gross would it have been if it was the other way around? She's just like coughing up hairballs. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but it, it, I, I guess like I get the idea that like she's a health nut, but I don't know that a health nut is like, oh yeah, lick up the V eight juice off me. Like, like I like, I like alcohol, and I'm not like I'm gonna pour. I like beer, and I'm like I'm gonna pour this Heineken down my fucking <laughs> chest. No, well, okay, let's get let's get some caveats here. There are times when something like that can actually seem erotic, V8, but you don't though? not V A juice, no. Okay, and also beer, no. No. However, uh, tequila, sure. Jägermeister, vodka, maybe, because it's a shot, maybe, right. and then you'd lick it up, or hey, maybe you're doing, maybe you're doing body shots, right? You know, because that's a thing. You know, so that that's the sort of thing that could be considered erotic. Mm-hmm. However. A sodium-filled vegetable drink that's oh. also sugar-filled as well uh, is not something that makes me go, mm, mm, rub my nipples and call me Sally. <laughs> and a lot of things make you do that, but that's not one of them. Mm-mm. But Body shots, though. The, the nipples and Sally, here we go. Yeah, like when I when I think of like erotic, I'm, I'm not like, mm, I want a thick, like viscous drink. <laughs> If I'm thinking erotic, I'm not thinking viscous at all. No, exactly. But I mean, that's kind of what it is. It's like a thick, like like a thick like tomato juice, right? So we, yeah. Well, it is. And that's what like, it is. Like I don't think it's t- it's, a, it's V8, it's eight vegetables in it. Uh, to, you know, like the like tomatoes, carrots, celery. There's uh, radish and veg like a uh, popcorn. Yeah, popcorn. That's it. <laughs> I I think. Parsley, maybe lettuce. I'm not sure. Maybe like turnip or something. The the no it, <laughs> eggplant. Ew, geez, it, it's not a it's not a Russian creation. Uh, V8 is potato. Uh, V8, yes. <laughs> it's uh, it's, uh, it's a potatoes. Is is potato. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's like it. It, ugh, it, it okay. First of all, if you're gonna be licking off somebody, it's gonna be, it's gonna make it even saltier. 
Mm -hmm. Because not only are you getting the the, the the ridiculous amount of sodium that's in the V8, but you're also going to get the body salt off the person. Body you're salt. It off. <laughs> <sighs> Guys, brace oh. yourself. This is what we're talking about for the rest of the episode. So. <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> licking V8 juice off of people. Rough my nipples and calm me. <laughs> you know what else was weird besides the V8 the V8 stuff with this sex scene is when he first goes into her apartment. By the way. After this, we have to talk about her apartment. But when he first goes into her apartment and she is like, just has like a house coat on and she takes it off. So you just see her, her back or whatever. And you're like, oh, okay, they're getting down and then puts a shirt on. <laughs> like, what? Why are you doing that? Because Lucinda Dickey was not going topless. That's why. I understand the, the actor's reason for not doing that. But in, in terms <laughs> of the movie, it didn't make a whole lot of sense. Like, ooh, let's get down so I can put this dress shirt on. <laughs> Oh, so their courtship is totally natural and normal, and 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 yeah, I don't have anything else to say about that one. That oh, it goes pretty much according to plan. They, I, I'm, I'm assuming that they, you know, achieve coitus, uh, because the next thing we see them, uh, they're sleeping, and she, she's woken up, uh, by the ghost of Asian Mo Howard, <laughs> more specifically Japanese Mo Howard, uh, who is, uh, you know. I get the the sword is like coming out of the closet, and it's funny too because watching it, it's like you could tell that they were framing it. They're like, "Don't get the top of the sword. We don't want to see the string." <laughs> right. <laughs> I also like, but yeah, she gets possessed by it, and also this is again, I'm convinced he's a wolf man. He's a wolf man. Well, oh, I mean, because yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we see what with without like like when when people say like the guy's hairy. Like, I mean, we're talking, like, Albert levels of Harry. Yeah. Wrestling reference. Got it in. Secured. It's, bro. like, it's like halfway down his shoulders. I genuinely thought, the first time I watched this, genuinely thought he had a sweater on. I'm not even joking. For, like, a there split second, when he takes off his shirt, I was like, oh, that's weird that he had, oh, oh. <laughs> it is Robin Williams. Um, But, and, and, oh, my God, her... What her apartment? Her apartment. Her delightfully eighties appointed apartment. But so so aggressively eighties that I th I was like, this feels like I'm watching like Hot Tub Time Machine where they're like, <laughs> look how eighties this is. Like it's so. Do you know what I mean? When you watch a movie that yep. takes place in the eighties and it's way more aggressive than if the movie was actually filmed in the eighties. That's and then you see a movie like this and you're like, okay, so they legitimately pitched people living like this actually in the 80s. But but this is even more aggressive than I than a lot of movies in the 80s that that were she, filmed in the 80s that I've seen. Let's see, she's got it's it's a first of all, it's a loft apartment, which is a very 80s big city thing. And she's an aerobics was, instructor. She's a health just, nut. So it, first thing that comes that 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 strikes me she does is have, that she, she does have a union job to pay for it right she but works for dwp but she is a health nut and the first thing that strikes me is she has a giant arcade machine in her, in her loft which right. i don't see her as having for some reason like maybe it was there when they got the space it was just part of the <laughs> part of the furnishing well i mean it, it looks like it's it's warehousing <laughs> section that uh, that was turned into loft apartments She's got like a, a, a like a wheelbarrow coffee table thing, which was great. Does she have a roommate? She has a roommate who looks oh. identical to her. And we we only see her for the convenience of saying she has a roommate. Any other time, she's never there. There there's literally no reason to have this character, except for her to kind of like you know needle her about dating a cop. But like she's there for that one scene. But even then, we don't really need that. No, we don't. But and, and then the other thing is, Nathan, the final detail about the apartment that I don't want to skip over is that she has a phone, um, which is totally normal. But uh, I think it's a pay phone. Because she's quirky and, and a young, hip young lady who has an arcade machine and a pay phone and a fridge that for some reason has a spinning stack on the top of it. <laughs> you can see on top of a, like a, a building. Like yeah. an exhaust port thing. I mean, I would argue that this also is like elements of flash dance too, along with oh, the exorcist. Oh, absolutely. Which will, which will come later. Absolutely. And of course, no eighties hip young ladies studio apartment in LA or loft apartment 
in L.A. would be complete without one of those Duran Duran-esque paintings of the lady wearing sunglasses. <laughs> to say, like you said, to say that this movie is aggressively 80s is an understatement. Oh, yeah. That's what I, that's what I mean. That's why I felt like watching this movie, I felt like I was watching something trying to approximate the 80s. <laughs> yeah. Any You watch any canon movie that is like set in present times, quote unquote, mm-hmm. It's like, it, this is what you get. These, this is the kind of thing that they're like, this is, this is how people live. Mahayam or Manahim or Golan and Globus. So the main thing Gorin? here, the, the, mm-hmm. the reason she's, she's getting possessed is because this ninja wants revenge on all the cops that shot him. So I'm, I waiting. Which, you know what? He shouldn't blame those cops. He should blame himself because he was a terrible ninja. He was a terrible ninja, but I'm also like, okay, so you're going to make this girl murder like, 37 cops because there's a lot of people shooting at you dude he is evil (laughs) he's a black ninja um who wears green but i love when so when she is uh when she is you know in possession possessed mode and she's got the full ninja gear on obviously because we can't see her face because it's a stunt it's a stunt double for the most part um i love how her she's got like the eyeshadow on and just like he had on right like weird the thickest eyeliner i'd ever seen on a man and then um there is one shot it's much later but it made me laugh so hard because i don't know why they decided to get, shoot this so close to her and in slow motion but she jumps out of a building in slow motion right in front of the fucking camera and it is the most obvious stunt double i have ever seen like i was like that is that is a man with different hair I feel like it's one of those things where, again, apologies to Sam, but <laughs> it's one of those things where I feel like he's like there'll be so much action happening that nobody's gonna notice it. <laughs> not not until they invent ultra high definition. Yeah, except for a couple. Which ch- I own this on Blu-ray. Thank you very much. He was just waiting for a couple chuckleheads like us to come along and freeze frame the shit. <laughs> Over here, I thought they were. I thought they were my friends. They <laughs> were so nice when they interviewed me. <laughs> hey, we 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 talk about it out of, out of love, but I mean, I laughed so hard when I saw that. Uh, oh, that stunt you know double. what? Here's the thing. Like, I I'll laugh about this movie now because it's it's crazy. It's absolutely bonkers, but. When I was a kid and saw this movie, greatest fucking thing I'd ever seen in my life. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I've rented this movie. I wanted to own this movie as a kid. So, I mean, like, there's... I might be able to be a little snarky about it now, but there is a legitimate spot in my heart for this movie. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't know it on Blu-ray if, I, if there wasn't. <laughs> Spoiler alert, I feel that about a lot of movies we talk about, but it's still fun to make fun. Yeah true now you guys don't worry because you guys all know that you know, there's no way a chick's gonna defeat a ninja we have to call in shokushugi okay uh, yeah playing uh mr yamada i think his name is in this movie i think yeah i feel so and- bad for lucinda dickie because apparently she really did like prepare like she was she wanted to do the fight scenes like she she's a dance she's you know she's a dancer so she has you know she's athletic and everything and she was mm. she was willing to go and train and get ready and everything before the film shot and like you said i think uh 80s men gonna 80s men and uh that was that was that was halted <laughs> from my understanding and again this is all just like you know uh rags that i've read on the internet mm-hmm. he he being shokushugi was actually very diva esque and insisting that he be the one to fight the ninja at the end. Like he, it had to be him. Hogan had to pose. I've I've heard I heard I read that and I but I also I also think there was an element of like oh they're never gonna believe it if it's a woman or at least that's what he said to mm-hmm. push his point kind of thing. Yeah. Which bullshit. <laughs> I mean, yeah. How many fucking great movies have we seen badass women kicking people's asses? Right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I just I don't know. I just kind of felt bad. For, I, I do have to ask you, though. Um, I would ask your opinion because you've seen this movie a million times. Uh, yeah. what, what's your favorite possessed ninja assassination? Because she kills a bunch of people, right? I know. I'm For me, it might I, be the hot tub. The hot tub's pretty great. <laughs> Insofar as this is crazy, 
there's no way she would have gotten away with this. Right. Because she doesn't go in that whole thing with any ninja gear on. Nope, just her. Just her. Like, And so, like, I mean, there's, like, I'm, I'm sure there was probably, like, you know, cameras in that place that would have seen her. And they would have been able to get pictures of her. The one that is probably my favorite in regard, in so far as, like, the actual ninja, like, taking over and behaving in the way, a, you know, a proper ninja would... Uh, is when um, John LaMotta uh, gets iced in this because uh, she goes to his place uh, in the full ninja gear. Apparently, uh, the black ninja who wears green had another full set of gear and uh, cl- uh, ninja tabby and everything that for her to wear in that cave stash of his. So she puts that all on. She goes to John LaMotta's place, who, uh, Mr. Akmonic from ELF. Uh, for anybody who watches Elf, if you don't, shame on you. Uh, and he, she goes in there under the cover of night, uh, one-on-one, she kills him, and then leaves. So there's no way she's going to be detected. She's got the mask on, everything. It's the most sensible ninja possession assassination of the entire movie. The sex stew at the at the health club in the hot tub is absolutely not. She sees one of the cops who... The guy is conservatively pushing 60, walking out with these two smoking hot 80s chicks, and he's going to go have a three-way at the health club with them. Yeah, And right away, too, I was like, wait a second. Because it's almost like she's killing a mob boss, the way they position it, because he's like he's got his right? arms back, like, you know, behind him. And he's-, he's got his arms... And he's got those... That those like weird, uh, two tone shaded aviators on, and Vince McMahon's current mustache. <laughs> yeah, and he's got like you know one lady in each arm kind of thing, and they're just like, "Ooh, you're giggle, so giggle, giggle, giggle! You're so sexy, you're so sexy." And I'm like, um, I I don't know what's going on because even if it, you could say like you know, oh, they're after his money. He's on a cop salary in the eighties. I, <laughs> I I think he's I think he's getting them uh getting them out of a prostitution beef. Uh, oh, okay. I didn't even get like he's fix he's fixing it for them so they don't have but we, you know we gotta go have sex in a hot tub and make a human <laughs> stew at the health club guys don't have sex in a hot tub <laughs> oh you, no good lord no no uh, don't even so, do it in a pool as showgirls no. would try to confuse you and tell you that it's Be- a good thing because as we said on that episode you could actually cause a water embolism and die yeah so don't do that it's not worth it I know it's no. Elizabeth Berkeley but it's not worth it. You want to get down to some hand stuff? That's cool. <laughs> fine. Just but no, no in out. All yeah. right. Uh, yeah. You want to get down to some hand stuff? So that's fine. But as soon as you see a pool, you you there's three words you need to say: fucker, fuck off. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> uh. So this this weird scene, like, well, she shows up so and like she she's... shows up and she's like the towel girl. Yeah, but then she, but then he's like, oh, you're way hotter than these two bitches. But the, the best part, the thing is, these two girls are going to have a disgusting three-way with this guy <laughs> at a health club in a communal hot tub. Yep. And they apparently are disgusted at the idea that he wants yet another girl to come in. And they're, they get, what is it? they say, she says things like, watch yourself, big man. Who does this bitch think she is? And then, as they are all, they are both repulsed by this. One of them says, "Come on, let's get out of here." And one of them says, "No, I want to watch." <laughs> yeah. So, well, I, I mean, it's hard to tell, but I think their lines are eighty yard. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I know, hundred percent. Because the only way you can explain as to why those two girls stayed while they were clearly showing signs of absolute disgust at the idea of Lucinda Dickey's character having sex uh, with this awful police mob boss. <laughs> well, it's also like, it's also very clearly ADR because the lines are so close together. Like, it's just so yeah. like they, you could tell they threw them in. They didn't leave quite enough space. Like, it's like that scene in the room where he's like, hi, doggy, you're my favorite customer. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> like, it's just like, <laughs> leave some fucking room to breathe here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, the um, and then she she like she jabs him with like what like a poison ring. It's like a ring that she has. It, it that the pearl comes off, and it's like a 
and like she stabs him in the back. It's I'm guessing it's poison tipped. Yeah, that kills him. And then she kills and the, the girls too. And she just kills the girls. But remember, it's not her. It's the terrible, terrible ninja that's possessing her, which who feels like I have to kill everybody. Which makes it even more hilarious because if you think about it like that, the ninja was like, my best course of action is to make out with this cop. <laughs> because <laughs> he would feel that right she doesn't she doesn't yeah. remember any of this stuff right she even says that she goes blank and loses hours upon hours of time i would have loved if he just like he went like she goes up she makes out the cop and then they have sex and then she leaves and then he he's just like oh shit i was supposed to kill him i guess i was just lost in his eyes <laughs> <laughs> And the whole uh, rest of the movie is just the black ninja just dis- uh, discovering so, his uh, his you know his other side. Is actually yeah, he's like, well, shit, I wasted my life being a Japanese Mo Howard. I could have moved to San Francisco and had a great old time. <laughs> it's a very progressive film. Exactly. Uh, so all right. Now, cop dead. Many cops. Two dead. ladies. Two ladies dead. Yeah. Um. Who are the f- who's the first person to show up to investigate this crime? Is it the police? Is it the homicide investigation unit? No, it's Shokushugi because he just knew. There's no ego trip going on here. You're right. Is that what you're trying to say? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, absolutely exa- not. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. No, he he knows where everything is happening always at any given moment. Like I don't think he even really gets hit that much, to be honest with you. No, uh, we. <laughs> We didn't mention that before this this possession for the you know for the sex stew possession um she goes back and she's trying to avoid being possessed the second time and she starts playing that arcade machine again and uh the the arcade machine is the thing that kind of helps possess her and drive her uh to madness to kill and i was like uh this is jack thompson's wet dream <laughs> Yeah, like he he he's like I knew it. It causes violence. He just watches this scene on a loop when he wants to get off. Um, Legend of Zelda is basically the devil. <laughs> so she's getting she's getting scared now, Billy. And I don't know what I'm doing. I'm losing time. And and, and uh, fucking Harry Manback cop uh, is like I know what I I know what I can do because you're you're afraid uh, that you're possessed by an ancient Japanese spirit, I'll take you to see a Chinese man. <laughs> yeah. Yep. He also <laughs> said, the way he says it too, he says like, I got this great guy. People swear by him. And I'm like, what? You just, you got a guy this- who's got, you got a guy. You got a, you got a, you got a, you got a ninja possessed guy. Yeah. Th- that's what he said. Like, I have like a, like a guy who specializes in ninja possessions, essentially. It's like, that's almost like a, to the, to the level of like that reoccurring joke in Always Sunny where Danny DeVito is like, yeah, I got a guy for that. Like, it's the same, <laughs> same level. <laughs> no. And so they go to see uh, James Hong. Um, it is James Hong. It is. Who, this proves to me, he's always been old. This, this, <laughs> I love how the two movies we've done with him are this and R.I.P.T. And he looks the same age in both of them. He does. I feel like he should be more proud of this movie. <laughs> well, because his his plan to figure out what's going on and, and, and to draw out the spirit is to take Lucinda Dickey, tie her down, mm-hmm. and get her high. And spin her around, which is the best, like... Ride round, baby. Like a record, baby. Ride round. Yeah. Oh, and and the best use of, like, a dummy ever. (laughs) And, 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 as we mentioned Elizabeth Berkeley earlier, I cannot help but mention her now, when she goes, Billy, help me. I'm so scared. (laughs) It made me think of that episode of Saved by the Bell, when she was so excited. I'm so excited. So excited. So scared. (laughs) We are just pop culture men, children. Oh, right? man. I mean, I've never actually watched that episode, but I've seen it referenced enough that it's in my, <laughs> like, it, I've, I've, I know it by osmosis now. Yeah. I'm not osmosis Jones, which is a different thing. No. Coming soon? Uh, well, and whatever you want, man. <laughs> I lo- okay, so, uh, yeah, this whole thing, Shokushugi is going to the hospital to find 
the corpse of the Black Ninja, right? <laughs> Morgue attack. My favorite part of this, my favorite part of this whole <laughs> scene where Shokushu goes to the morgue <clears throat> is when he shows up and the two like morgue attendants see him because the way they walk up to him is as if they were like, ugh, another ninja. Well, let's take care of it. Well, it's not even that. He walks into the morgue and they're like, hey, what are you doing here? And he goes, come here. He just motions to them. Doesn't say come here. He just kind of looks at them like, uh, these two guys come here, I got something to tell you. And rather than being like, no, we're calling security because you shouldn't be here in the morgue, they're like, all right, I guess so. We'll come and see what you have to say. <laughs> yeah, it's like, boop a doop a doop a doop a doop a doop a Noggin knocker, both guys out, and he steals a body from the morgue. Before I knew what he was doing, I was like, why did he just steal a corpse? <laughs> because... When he arrived in L.A., he was met by the members of this monastery uh, that's apparently in the hills of Los Angeles. Right. And if they, he, they're like, okay, well, also, um, we did, we didn't talk about it. Oh, because it's, 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 it's coming up right now, actually. After the morgue attack, when he lo- opens up the, the, the body bag and sees, you know, the Japanese Mo Howard, the black ninja that wears green. Uh, this title keeps getting longer and longer, oh, yeah. doesn't it? Um, he we have a flashback to the movie I want to see, mm-hmm. because apparently, as we discussed in uh, Revenge of the Ninja, even in the middle of the eighties, it was still feudal Japan in Japan. Yeah, uh, Shokushugi's I'm guessing father was killed by the 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 black ninja who wears green and his clan. And uh, the, they, they, they threw a ninja star at his face and he catches it right in the eye like uh, Butters in that episode of South Park. <laughs> and this is why he has sworn revenge on uh, Japanese Mo Howard, the black ninja that wears green. Yeah. Yeah. And and like you said, when they flash back to that scene, I'm like, wait, how old is Shokushugi's character? Because this looks like it took place 800 years ago. Right? <laughs> He's wearing like the, the big pants and like the uh, that, that, you know, those um, nobleman peasant wear that you would see if you were watching like Kurosawa's Seven Samurai. <laughs> but like... So with that aside, the most then there's like the most harrowing scene in the movie. If you're Lucinda, right? Or if you're Lucinda Dickey, or if you're Christy or whatever, the most harrowing mm. scene is when she's sitting in the police station. This is after the ninja exorcist thing, and she says to Billy, "Why do I have all these bruises?" And he's like, "Oh, I don't know. You like fell a bunch." I'd be like, "Whoa!" <laughs> like if I'm <laughs> if I'm Christy, I'm like, "Did you assault me while I was under?" Like. I thought it. I, I thought you were saying it was more how ha- more harrowing and uh, upsetting to her because uh, when she is during this scene, she's actually kind of she meets two of the other cops that help you know shoot that ninja one hundred and fifty times who are just openly discussing the case in front of her, right? Uh, but they cops. see her and she's just zoning right out because she's flashbacking to when and they're just they're just kind of looking at her and she's just like. Like looking at them with like this disgust and horror on their face, and when they finally bring her around, and it's like, you know what? I bet um, that uh, Latino and uh, black cop think she's a racist now. Oh yeah, I get, I get, because I get she to. has a look of horror on her face when she sees the two of them. Like, um, you work here, <laughs> <laughs> right? Like they're like, oh god, we got a Karen on our hands. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> But no time to think about that. It's it's time for the funeral, and oh my god, this funeral! Who is the funeral for? One of the cops. Oh, just one of them. Okay. Just... It's it's either John Lamada or the 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 sex stew guy. Yeah, and this is where this is where the uh, Luc- Lucinja, as I've called her, whenever she's Ooh. under. Yeah. yeah. I thought I thought Japanese Mo Howard, the black ninja that wears green, was a good name, but Luc- <laughs> Lucinja, that's all. Oh. I like that. But she this is the scene where she just like she tears through and starts murdering cops, right? Like with a bow well, and they, arrow. She does, but it's, again, it's the terrible ninja in her who doesn't realize that you're supposed to go undetected. Right. So But again, this is a, but they're bad a, cops a, on top of that. Well, this and this is to my point. It's a traditional cop funeral. Uh so they're having the you know the 21 gun salute 
um, when she actually attacks the the police officers at the funeral. One of the cops that she's trying to kill says to the one of the one of the color guard doing the twenty one gun salute, "Give me the gun!" Like he's gonna shoot her. Those guns are always filled with blanks. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, because if they weren't, they would just be like there would be birds firing being off shot. rifles in the middle of the city. Yes, and those bullets would come down somewhere at some point, killing somebody or something. Right. <laughs> Right, some poor guy's hang gliding, and he just gets clipped on the side. Oh. Or you know what? Even if it even if it doesn't even hit anybody up in the sky, just randomly halfway down the, the two or three blocks away. Meow! Yeah, real tough conversation for Billy. Sorry, Mittens is dead, Billy. Why? Oh, because there was a cop funeral up the way, and they did a twenty-one gun salute. You know how it is. How we fire real bullets into the air. Yeah. <laughs> Yeehaw! <laughs> Yeah, that that didn't make any sense. Also, no, that legitimately, uh, uh, I guess, a, a, a real problem in in some of the more you know, gun healthy states uh, in the U.S. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Fire my gun up into the air. Well, that's a cool people do. Um, <laughs> I I have a big question here too. So, um, th- through through the la- next little while, basically, Shokushugi figures out that they have to get the ninja out of her. And then the ninja is going to go into his own body so Shokushugi can fight and kill the ninja, right? Right. So if he can just possess his own corpse, why didn't he just keep, stay in his own body at the beginning? I, I again, <laughs> the this is the, for me anyways, this is the only supernatural ninja movie that I've, I think I've ever seen. But that's why I'm that, not gonna that's lie. why when I first saw this I was like ninjas are ghosts kind of yeah every every ninja movie uh, other than this one that I've seen are you know they might be hard to kill but can can be killed by conventional means but they're not dressed to kill no and nor if looks could kill <laughs> right um, Richard Grieco yeah and they're they're also uh not looking for a kill point. No, they are they are hard to kill while they are marked for death, right? And out for justice, so. Pootie Tang, Wheeler Man. <laughs> but yeah, that 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 was that was the thing I, I that was what I wrote down because he goes into his own body and I was like, well, why didn't he just stay there to begin with? Surely it would have been easier to just continue killing people. Well, the, yeah, but let's we'll get to that in just a second because this is the part where. Uh, Lucinja and uh, Shokushugi kind of first butt heads. They meet and they they fight in an abandoned house in L.A., which was probably going for one and a half million dollars mm-hmm. in the state that it was in. I mean, still, and uh, they they fight throughout this like this uh, abandoned house that's been stripped down to the studs. Uh, it's you know. Fucking Ichokushu he gets to do his Rey Mysterio entrance where he he jumps up through the floor. I was waiting for Buyaka Buyaka six one nine, mm-hmm. but it's it's L A and not San Diego, so dial it up, right? Uh, and so he does get the better of the upper hand on her. Uh, takes the mask off. And he's like, dude, you're a chick. <laughs> essentially yeah like what you can't fight and then he's like oh you're possessed by a guy that makes sense i get it that's why you're you're able to do that not because you're legitimately you know good at uh fighting and athletic it's because you're not <laughs> you're you're not really a woman you're a guy uh we're heading into some terrible i'm just gonna, we're just gonna move on well that's the, that, that's um, what i talked sh- about that's what i talked about the layer of misogyny under the surface here <laughs> <laughs> well there's there's i mean there's not only is there a layer of mis- misogyny but i mean some latent transphobia too yeah it's it's a it's a it's a guy trapped in a woman's body mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So we're just gonna move on okay shokushugi gets arrested and uh i guess keeps blow darts in his eye patch yeah 
yeah, he has it, he has it in his eye patch, and he like takes out the cops and then escapes again. Yep, and uh, Billy goes to Lucinja's apartment to confront her, um, and she's still sort of kind of possessed and is going to kill him, but no, love stopped her from killing him, apparently. <laughs> it was po- more powerful than the black ninja that wears green. Named Mo, Japanese Mo Howard. Uh, yeah, the Huey Lewis song kicks in right as she's bringing her sword down and just the power of love stops her. Dun, dun. <laughs> dun, dun. That's the power uh, of love. <laughs> so, all right. So we're, we're heading towards our, our final show, Kashugi Down. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, we, we head up to the hills uh, where the temple is. and They're alive with the sounds of music. Oh, this this fight is chef's kiss. I mean, chef's kiss. I mean, I thought everything was so ridiculous. Well, I thought everything was crazy up to this point, and then this last scene started. Um, I also didn't know that a, that the okay when they do the smoke bomb thing, that's just so they can disappear, right? Yes, that's the idea. I it's, didn't it's, know it's, it also acted as a nerve gas agent for everyone else. <laughs> no, that's it's not knockout gas because okay. if you did that. You would be knocked out as well. Right. But also, apparently, when they throw the smoke bomb down, what they actually do is Tasmanian devil into the ground. Oh, my God. And then, and then twirl yeah, up how did it, how, Also, how did the black ninja that wears green take over all of the uh, adherents of the monastery? How does he have a whole team? Like, they go bonkers and start attacking Shokushugi. Yeah, I don't understand. Yeah, he can only possess, like, one person, right? I I get I don't. Yeah. So he just like he just like cuts off little pieces of soul and just starts throwing them around at them or what? Uh, like like shurikens. Oh, okay. Oh, that's what he's doing. Okay, so he's got little yeah. little soul shurikens. Yeah, little 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 oh, soul ninja stars there and little 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 shouse. Uh, sh- I can't think of his name. <laughs> Shang Sung. <laughs> Shang Sung. Shang yeah, Sung. He was the, uh, the little Shang. He's the wizard. The wizard guy from the first Mortal Kombat, yeah. the good Mortal Kombat movie. I was like, I was like, Shao Khan sang. Shao, no, Shao Khan is the was Brian Thompson mm. in the the second one. That awful, awful second one. The one that as soon as he took off his scary mask, I was like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, this guy. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, this, uh, this, this but yes, fight, no. Apparently, when you throw the smoke bomb, you can dig on down. This this fight is insane. It also, has one of the best, and I know there's probably something else. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cut you off here, but I just want to say, um, the way that they stab him in the back of the head and out the, his <laughs> back, like through the top of his head and out his back, is how he gets yep. stabbed. I was like, he literally got shish kebobbed. Yeah, Whew. skewered, if you will. Um, and speaking and of speaking of skewered, Secor then percent proceeds to eat Christie's face. It seems like yeah, kisses her like a moose eating an apple. Oh man, uh, but in this whole scene, I mean, we've seen throughout the movie, we've seen uh, Christy Lucinda uh, fighting. Showing that she has the wherewithal and the skills and the abilities to fight as a ninja or be as athletic and nimble as a ninja. The fact that this guy, this 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 Japanese Mo Howard black ninja that wears green possessed her and then is then transported out of her into his body, it would have made such a more cathartic ending for her. Yes. To be the one to fight him. Yes. To be like, you may have possessed me, but I have all your knowledge now. So that then they're evenly matched. She knows everything that he knows. And for them to fight and her to win that, thus completing her hero's journey. But what happens? No. We get Shokashugi, the, the, the supporting character. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the, I guess, Obi-Wan in this situation. Yes, it would exactly. It would be the exact same thing as if Alec Guinness fought Darth Vader at the end. Well, and, but I mean like if if Alec Guinness And then won. And then yeah, and then won. Instead of and then Luke died early on. Right. <laughs> that would have been so, so stupid. 
And then, uh, and, and, and to keep with this, after, uh, you know, the, the black ninja that ninja that wears green is skewered, he just gets Jedi slash Sith out of existence. His body evaporates, disappears. I will say that they do let Christy be the one that stabs him, but it's after they the other two guys do the whole fight. Yeah. It's like it's so, like I mean, a distraction it, finish in a WWE match. It's like it's yeah, exactly. Or, you know, I was I was gonna say it's like let your brother do something too. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Which I wonder how hard of a sell it was to Shokashuki to even let her do that much. I could I could just see Sam now like look You've you've beaten him up. You've fought him in the monastery. You've def- you've fended off all of the monks. You've fought him, and uh, you know she's just gonna stab him. That's it. That's the only thing that she's gonna do. It's not even gonna be like a a high kick or a ninja kick. She's not gonna throw a shuriken. She's just gonna take a stabby knife and stab him in his head. That's it. <sighs> Fine, <laughs> I guess. Like. I remember as a kid thinking Shokashugi was the fucking shit, man. He was the coolest. Mm-hmm. And then reading some of the stuff that he, he actually, like the diva stuff that he got up like this is like, oh, it takes such a shine off. Yeah. Well, it's like even like, you know, when I use, when I used to watch like the early Seagal stuff, like Under Siege, and I was like, oh, he's pretty cool. Like he's a different kind of fighter. He's a little thicker. He's a little, his fighting style is different. And then you watch more movies, they get worse. And then you hear about how he possibly had women <laughs> kidnapped in his basement and shit like that. He's a garbage person. And he's like a yeah. Putin sympathizer hiding out in Russia. Yeah. You start to lose respect for some of these people. Now, Steven Seagal yeah. clearly worse than Shokashuki, but I'm just, I just, my point <laughs> this word yeah exactly like there at some if you can enjoy this stuff but you definitely have to separate the art from the artist right all right and then roll credits that's it yeah that's 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 ninja three the the domination and i am going to frame these put them right up next to my notes for garbage pail kids and monkey bone and garbage <laughs> pail kids <laughs> that'll be bad well i, I they <laughs> One thing I do want to mention just before we get to the to the last part here, um, mm-hmm. the movie literally ends with the character saying "It's over now." Like those, that's the last line in the movie, <laughs> which I thought was funny. Yeah, Shokushuki <laughs> says that to Christy, and then walks away in silhouette. He gets even. He even he even gets the last word in the movie. He gets the last word and the last shot. The hero of the movie yeah. who showed up conservatively forty eight minutes in, <laughs> and and was in four scenes three or four scenes yeah yeah in total yeah 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 that being said Mm -hmm. brendan is this worth a watch yes they drunk watch okay there you go (laughs) i am absolutely the same it's obviously worth (laughs) a watch there's no other way like we just just asking the other options is pure theater this movie is worth a watch this is a crazy movie a crazy yeah. movie. If you want to watch a movie where every, I don't know, four minutes, you're like, oh, oh, what? What? <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> the, the thing is, when you get those scenes, like, you don't have enough time to try to no. parse out the logic behind it. No. Because you're already moving on to something more insane. Yeah, like minutes later. You're like, oh, yeah. fuck, she's being hypnotized by an arcade machine? Wait a second, <laughs> what is she doing with that drink? <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? James Hong? He's Chinese, not Japanese. <laughs> It was the eighties. Unfortunately, uh, that wasn't always clear. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> just ask the, the the kid from uh, Vamp. Mm-hmm. So there you go. That's it. Obviously, go check out Ninja Three: The Domination. Get buy it on Blu-ray from Shout Factory slash Scream Factory. Do yourself a favor. It it is, in my opinion, the best of the canon Ninja trilogy. Absolutely, as far as like pure entertainment value goes well we got it some more to go because i haven't seen all of them yet well we've only got that means we we only have enter the ninja and american ninja 2 well i mean that's a first in berg and i mean three and four and but, right okay <laughs> but when you say the canon ninja trilogy you're talking about enter the ninja okay. revenge of the ninja and ninja 3 the domination okay well then enter the ninja okay 
It's it's the weakest in the entries as far as I'm concerned. Oh, we don't talk about bad movies on this podcast, so no go. <laughs> I, <didn't... laughs> I know. All right. Well, you know what? Uh, we're going to take a break because we got to pay bills and whatnot. But uh, stick around because we will be right back. What were they thinking? And we are back. Yeah, and uh, we're back. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna peek around corners. We're gonna be real quiet, just like a couple of little ninjas, little little uh, poetic ninjas, if you will. Mm. We're just going to uh, sneak into your ear holes and oh, I, okay, assassinate your mind, baby. <laughs> okay. Yeah, and it's a little spicy, a little spicy for NPR, but. Um, this movie's got me all kinds of riled up. This is getting a little blue here. Uh, do you have any V8 I, lying around? Ooh, daddy, you know I do. Um, we're it's now phones are really lighting the, up, right? I think they're telling us to stop because it's unsettling. <laughs> um, it's now time for the low haiku, mm. and um, Brendan, just in case this is someone's first episode listening to us and if if you are congratulations i think you've picked the best one in a while mm. uh tell them what the low haiku is all about yes and also yes it's been a while since we've watched a movie where i didn't feel a lot of pain watching it so yes you picked a good one to start um the low haiku is uh, 17 perfect syllables that uh we uh, we use to break down the movie we just talked about for you know the last little while Okay, all right, and uh, as uh, as I was the uh, plot leader on this uh, this ride, uh, I will invite you to share with your with us your low haiku. <clears throat> There's exorcisms, ninja fights, V8 sex scenes, arcades. Oh, cannon. Very good. Very, very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Nathan, would you like to read your uh, low haiku? Yes. Uh, mine is as such. Ninja Exorcist. Power of show compels you. This sword is clean now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Very good. Very good. And, uh, well, this is going to hurt, but we're going to get... Hiya! Yeah, Jim Carter. Oh, that's a coming soon. Uh, another fantastic canon film. <laughs> In the same way as this. <laughs> well, actually, right? maybe, maybe maybe a little less so, but <laughs> no. Well, I mean, yeah. It's gonna say, let's make a gymnast a, a movie star. <laughs> that never fails. Any, never fails. No. Anyhow, mm. uh, you know what? Uh, we've we've talked about it. Had our little poems about it, mm -hmm. uh, but we want you guys to to think that you know what we're we're the arbiters of good taste. I mean, we 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 know that you guys have your own thoughts on things, and and we want you to be you know uh, free thinking, uh, you know, folks, you know, autonomous in in your life, if you will, and so much so that we we like to say a little thing to remind you that that we're not that and that that little thing is uh, what what is it that we say Brendan that little thing that that thing well that little thing that thing that 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 sort of thing that we always say around here you know that thing it kind of it kind of goes like this don't take a word for it <laughs> that's right don't take our word for it. Uh, I mean, we, come on, Brian. In this this movie, it's a, it's a canon film. They were they were pure eighties. Everyone was doing coke and watching ninja movies. The, the critics they must have loved this movie. I believe you're right, and that everyone was doing coke, and probably a lot of them were watching ninja movies. But um, there's not too many reviews of this movie by the critics out there. So out of the ten reviews, it's out of forty percent. So four out of ten critics were like cool man yeah but they're you're they're stuck up jerks that can't have a good time the audience probably obviously absolutely loved it. it's got to be high 90s right 54 percent my faith in humanity is shaken <laughs> but nathan i want to i want to assure you that if you liked this movie 
Um, you may also like the following. Uh, Truth or Die. Um, don't know what okay. anything about that. Uh, a Dolph Lundgren movie called Red Scorpion. Um, uh. a, Jack- a Jackie Chan movie called The Protector. Um, <laughs> a movie that is not about what I thought it was about. It's just called Skeeter. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I thought, but then there's like an alien bug face, so I guess it's some sort of monster movie. And then, last but not least, uh, we already talked about it. Uh, Enter the Ninja. I, 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 it's fine. It's like again the weakest of the three, but yeah. we'll, I'm sure we'll feature it on the show someday. Just out of completion. I love how all the photos, by the way, of this movie are just a, most of them are just Lucinda Dickey's face. <laughs> it's the same picture over and over <laughs> again. But anyway, there's not a whole lot of uh, critic reviews to get into here, but we'll get into a few of them. Um, let's see. I, I'm, I'll, I'll read one here from uh, Air, Anton, Anton Bittel from Little White Lies. It says, somehow combines a now unstoppable and unstealthy ninja killing machine with an exorcism motif lifted straight from horror and gratuitous aerobic sequences showing off the talents of Lucinda Dickey flush from recent success in Breakin. It's a positive review. All right. Well, I got a positive one from John Beefus of the commercial appeal out of Memphis, Tennessee, and I'm going to read it the way I think it. He probably intends it. Okay. When an aerobic instructor and her new police detective boyfriend make the beast with two backs, you can't help but notice that it's disturbingly hairy. That's just one of the many disorienting elements that make this such a whacked out experience. Three out of four. That's fair. He was disturbing, unusually hairy. Um, <laughs> beast with two backs. <laughs> beast with two backs makes that scene even more disturbing. Um... Mike McGranigan from the Film Racket says, A gonzo masterpiece. You will see such bizarre sights that you'll have no alternative other than to think, WTF? We we weren't speaking in abbreviations like that in the 80s, so no. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Rob Vo of Mania.com writes, It distills the 80s down into diamond hard pellets dumps them into a shotgun and unloads both barrels right in your face. Shockingly, that is a negative review. Yeah, that sounds like a four-star Roger Ebert review to me. That is an absolutely, yeah, but he gave it an F. But, I mean, wow. every, all those words put together, that is a yes, please. I mean, I think maybe Rotten Tomatoes just entered it wrong. It's actually an F for fuck yes. <laughs> America. <laughs> uh, enough of these. Let's get let's get to the audience reviews. Let's let's go okay. on down. There's not too many of these critics ones anyway. Um, I'm gonna read a negative one here, uh, Nathan. So please brace yourself. This is from Robert P. Um, Robert Patrick. Rob. Yeah, he's not a fan. Um, he says, "I wish I could give this horrible movie zero stars, but since I can't, here's the best I can do." I have never seen a ninja as stupid as this one in the beginning of the movie. For example, he dives into the water, but minutes later, he is shown running down a dirt road because he is as dry as can be. But even the sword strikes, you can tell, do not hit the men, but all of them die because of one hit. Half a star. I mean, I think he's more upset at the continuity department than anything. Okay. But it seems like a weird weird reason to drag the whole movie. Well, my my first one uh, comes from Neil Breen. Okay. Um, and he writes, A dying assassin... Tra- okay, you know what? I should read this the way I should read the last one. A dying assassin transfers his ninja skills and periodic floating sword to a female phone company worker and aerobics enthusiast who becomes possessed to kill the cops who gunned him down. But then, Neil says, Weakest of the trilogy... Better than most ninja films. Okay. Wrong on the first part. Absolutely right on the second part. Three out of stars. Is it real? Oh, Izzy over here. I'm 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 fucking raiding the Raiders. <laughs> yes, notice that. Um, okay, this one's a bit lengthy, but I think it's a pretty good one. This is also from Neil Breen. Third okay. movie of the ninja series, but all has no link to each other. The this movie really fail big time. Action is rather laughable and weak. 
a black ninja kills his target at the golf course. Soon, many cops arrive, and the ninja kills a lot of them. In the final round, the cops surround him and fire plenty of rounds to kill him. He still managed to escape by hiding. Lucinda Dickey happened to see him and is lured by his spell when holding his sword. <clears throat> then the ninja chats some spell and died. A cop, Jordan Bennett, that's not his name, tried to woo her, but she not interested. Is that the actor? Nope, it's neither. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> After just a while, he win her heart. Lucinda, <laughs> Lucinda see the faces of those cops that kill Ninja and will have flashback and go into trance. She get possessed by the dead Ninja and execute revenge, but she will not remember what happened. Jordan bring her to Witch Doctor James Hong and the evil spirit reveal, but Jordan keep it from Lucinda. Shokushugi come from Japan to exact revenge on Black Ninja. At the funeral of two dead cops, Lucinda once again go on revenge and till kill two more cops that shot the ninja. All the cops chase her. She tr show track her down and fights, but let her go. Jordan questions show, and he say he can save her if they go to temple. Only a ninja and kill a ninja. Jordan try to handcuff Lucinda at home, but she get berserk and escape. She go to temple and show fight her. The spirit returned to his body, and they continued to fight. At last, show managed to kill Black Ninja. One star. Are you sure that wasn't Milos? <laughs> One star. Oh god! Oh, then it wasn't Milos because I don't think he is that kind of terrible taste in the movies. <laughs> but he described. I just ran no, down the, the whole. whole movie. He just basically ran down the whole plot. Yeah. Spoiler alert, Neil Breen. <laughs> well, my next one is a short one, but it comes from French Neil Breen. Oh, and uh, French Neil Breen says, "Sul un ninja pour tuer un autre ninja." Hmm. Pensez-y. Okay. Which, in just in case anybody who's listening doesn't speak French, uh, I will translate. Only a ninja can kill another ninja. Think about it. Five out of stars. Think about it. I mean, it's pretty oh. straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> That's a thinker. It works on a lot of levels. Um, this review is also from Neil Breen. Uh, hottest 80s ninja chic on the planet, because he says C-H-I-C. Oh, Lucinda, man, I loved her as a kid. She was so awesome. Damn, she was so hot, and she does some breakdancing in another awesome 80s movie. Five stars. Okay. Uh, well, my next one comes from Neil Breen, and I, 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 I Neil Breen, he's all over the place in this mm -hmm. one. He writes, OMG, this movie is awesome. It's so bad that it's good. It crosses like four genres of movie. Action, dance, and horror. <laughs> dance? Four genres of movie. Okay, so maybe it's like action, action, dance, horror. <laughs> horror dance? I don't know. Because that's only three genres. Anyways, they continue. Go show Kashugi. We watched this movie for inspiration for our Halloween costumes. Gotta love the video game haunting scene. Five out of stars. Oh, I really hope when he said Halloween costumes that they just wore the gi. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going as Japanese Mo Howard. No. <laughs> <laughs> Eyeliner and all. Yeah, don't take any pictures, please. <laughs> and uh, I'll run for public office. Yeah, Mo <laughs> I th yeah, it was all one party, actually, where they all got caught. Um, okay, this is my last one, again, from Neil Breen. Uh, the beginning and the ends are awesome, but the middle bit drags with little to no kus Kusagi and far too much Lucinda Dickey making out with the <laughs> Harry, as in the name Harry, cop dude. Love the <laughs> cheese ball ninja lore, though. Three and a half stars. Okay. <laughs> well, my last one... Uh, comes from, I, I think, somebody who may have experienced this movie the way I experienced this movie. Because it's, again, Neil Breen, though. Mm -hmm. uh, and he writes, There are a lot of firsts for me here. First martial arts movie. First introduction to ninjas. First exposure to sex in the movie. There was no sex in this movie. It was just implied. First horror film. Yes, it is. With that said... It's a horrible B movie. You're wrong. But because of the nostalgia, it will always hold a special place in my heart, LOL. Three and a half out of stars. 
Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. You're not giving this thing five. Up. Like, I mean, you're, you're. What are you even doing? I mean, you say no sex, but I mean that. that it's implied. That V8 though, that was pretty much sex. That was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can't. At that point, he was probably like, "Well, I'm done." <laughs> I only imagine this. This poor individual is now associating with V8 with all of theirs. Like, they like can't find a partner who doesn't want to be drenched in vegetable juice. Apparently, um, when they originally shot that scene, by the way, I read that it was a lot more, like, aggressive. Like, she was pouring it, like, all over her body. Oh, my God. And and they had to they had to tone it back, <laughs> tone it down, because they said, I think this is too much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. The reviews. Mm-hmm. There you go. That's the review. So it's, that's that's man. That's Ninja Three: The Domination. Uh, so now that it's in our uh, in our rear view, uh, we're gonna take a second to kind of talk about some stuff that. Uh, well, I mean, we liked this, but other stuff that we liked as well. Uh, it's time for the dance craze sensation that's sweeping the nation. That's right. It's time for the what you watching, bud. Whether it's the best thing in the world or it belongs in the mud, I just want to know what you watching, bud. So, Brennan, mm-hmm. what you watching, bud? Um, well, I watched a lot, but I'll point out one thing uh, in particular, as I, as we always do. Um, I watched a movie directed by uh, Park Chan-wook, the guy who directed uh, Old Boy and a number of other uh, great movies. Um, I watched a movie called The Handmaiden. Um, this movie is about uh, these two uh, thieves, essentially, this uh, go- guy and a younger girl. And they set about to scheming this... Uh, young this young rich girl that basically when she's set to inherit like a ton of money and their scheme is that the girl is going to go in and work as this as this woman's handmaiden and uh attempt to help the guy woo her marry her and then have her uh committed so uh, to an asylum so he can take her money and that is the plan that they set forth um it's a period piece uh and of course, that is not how uh, this movie goes. It takes a lot of unexpected uh, plot twists and turns. And um, I'll just say uh, this is uh, one that you probably don't want to watch in any sort of public place. Um, it gets <laughs> kind of graphic at times. Um, and uh, but yeah, it's 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 an excellent movie though. Uh, I think after watching it, I said I think this might have. I think this might be in like my top 20 of maybe all time. Like that's how good it is. It's, it's a really uh, beautiful movie and it's uh, compelling and it's great. And I think you can watch it on, uh, actually it might not be available right now, but you can probably rent it. So anyway, the handmaiden. Okay. What you bud, what you watching? Well, I actually watched a, uh, um, I, I, I guess overlooked, uh, Western starring Charles Bronson called Chato's uh, Land. And uh, the whole movie uh, has uh, Charles Bronson as this fellow named Chato who kills a super racist sheriff uh, in the East of the Old West. So, I mean, you know, it's par for the course. Uh, but it's it, he kills him in self-defense and then, you know, takes off for the uh, the desert heading back to his... Uh, you know, where his, uh, his folks, his, his tribe is living uh, because he's Native American. And uh, Jack Palance uh, plays a, a fellow who feels like he needs to wrong the right of this super racist sheriff getting killed. And uh, he heads up a posse to, to chase him down. And old Chato just starts, you know, he's picking them off one by one. Uh, I think my only qualm with the movie is that um, he doesn't have a uh, he he doesn't have a, a part where he shows mercy so he could be like a, a sympathetic hero because he's picking folks off. Uh, but other than that, I mean the uh, the you know the action is cool. Uh, the the sets are 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 nice. It's not a ridiculous western. It's the it can be a kind of a slower paced at some points. 
uh, do let you know that there's a trigger warning because it is a Charles Bronson movie. There is a sexual assault. So it's got everything there. Uh, and if you don't mind, I will uh, I will get our little chimpanzee friend out of the green room if he will come in and, and, and have something to say. One second. Hello! It's good friend Montrose Minkington the Third here, and I'd just like to take this time to invite you all over to my YouTube channel, Montrose Monkington TV, uh, where I talk about the graps and whatnot. Uh, you can also be friends with me on the Facebook group, Montrose Monkington the Third Esquire and Friends. Uh, and you can also uh, tweet at me on your Twitter devices, at Montrose the Third, S number 3 RD. Thank you. More later. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Montrose. You're welcome. And, of course, you can find us all over the place. We are on all the social medias. Uh, we're on Facebook. Just search for us there. Uh, we're on Twitter and Instagram at WWTT Podcast. Uh, you can find us at our home base at Age of Radio. Big time! You just go to ageofradio.org slash what were they thinking. Um, you can also uh, locate us on any other podcast app you want. Just search for us and we will pop up in your podcast feed. Um, you can also uh, look for us over at Redbubble and TeePublic and uh, join our Patreon at patreon.com slash WWTT podcast. Now, all that having been said, oh, and I do want to announce, um, Just I'm going to announce the movie next week just because it's one of the tournament movies and you all know it's coming. But next week we will, of course, talk about Howard the Duck. Our last, Ain't no uh, one going to steal him. <laughs> what? Ain't no one going to steal him. Is that part of the song? I think so. Oh, okay. Um, Howard the Duck. That's what it sounds like to me. Um, anyways. Our, our, our final uh, tournament runner-up. So we'll talk about that next week. Next week. But that all having been said, um, I guess Nathan just, just kind of put the, the stamp on this one, the rubber stamp on this. I guess I just have uh, a few questions about Ninja 3. Oh, fire away. I am the expert on this one. Okay, well... In a movie in mm -hmm. in, in which um, a ninja, a bad ninja, by the way, um, possesses... Bad meaning evil, but also terrible at his job. Yes. Um, possesses an aerobics instructor who... Who's also a telephone worker. Who also enjoys uh, sexy time with uh, the thick, viscous delight of V8. Right. Um, and in a movie where, uh, her Robin Williams esque body haired boyfriend, um, just woos her via stalking. Mm -hmm. As was the style in the eighties. Certainly one of the more aggressive ones though, uh, in these movies, I would say. Um, and, and in a movie in which, uh, a supporting character who we meet conservatively 57 minutes into this movie suddenly becomes the star and, uh, does right. all the fighting at the end. Uh huh. And, and in a movie, uh, directed by a friend of the podcast, Sam Furstenberg, mm -hmm. um, I guess I just gotta, I, I gotta know. Is this the best movie ever made? Quite possibly. Okay.